Nobody can run an event solo. I couldn't run an event half this size myself. Everybody has to have a team. With the big house, we are really well prepared. We have to spend months of our lives in Skype meetings, talking about what needs to happen. And then on tournament weekend, it's gotta be executed. We don't really have a second chance. We can't have somebody doing training on the job for a couple weeks, learning the kinks, and then figuring it out. We wanna put ourselves in a position where when we get here on Thursday to set up, everybody knows what to do. It's gotta be a fun experience at the end of the day. Somebody coming in and helping out, they are not gonna keep doing that if it's just a job to them. It's gotta be a hobby and experience. You have to put somebody in a position that they really want, if there's that intangible motivation to get something done, I don't need to be giving orders to them, they'll be proactive and do it themselves. True or false? The Gims always wins. True. Ooh. With Gimmer, he's got stream content, uh, stream views, He's got deliverables that he cares about a lot, and I know that he cares. How many hours at one of these tournaments do you spend working every day? Uh, 12, 16 hours. We're in it together, but I know that he's going to take care of his needs and be proactive about it. All right, so on stage we have the main camera for the crowd, the players, etc. We got two little player cams. Uh, we got the TV, obviously, the CRT monitors. Got the systems, got power. Uh, we got a little monitor in the back so the person running the cameras can see what's going on. We got the main computer, we got the replay computer, and then we got the uh, thumbnails computer for YouTube thumbnails. And an audio mixer, obviously. Give away the company secrets out here. Something that people don't really realize is that the streamers actually have a lot of control over the pace of a tournament. And if things aren't going well for the streamers, like the tournament itself is going to be slowed down. What kind of challenges do you run into? It's impossible to perfectly uh, time out a schedule because we have blank out of blank sets. Mm -hmm. And if it goes to the last match, the schedule's all messed up. The Enforcer just came through. Like what's happening right now is the Wizro was stuck in Wii U. So he held up loser side. And now we don't have anything to stream. So we got to figure out a way to not lose viewers. Is top player a privilege when it comes to all things stream related? <laughs> I have nothing to say, man. <laughs> top players are the only ones to ask for that. So obviously, loser brackets still have a bit top to catch up. Yeah. Top eight have started. That would was win or semis. Do you want to do Wiz's match? He just got here. Let's just put Wiz's match up. I'm doing it. I think now that there's more, you know, spotlight on a lot of our players. We need to dress well. We need to present ourselves well. Look nice. Like Spencer. This is like a Heather Gray comfortable looking hoodie. Because like it has that like fuzzy texture. How do we get one of these? I don't know, you have to be a uh, special like Spencer. We should ask him, how do you get that hoodie? Spencer. I bought it a while ago. You bought it a while ago and that's how he acquired it. <laughs> there are a lot of people that want more background and insight to what goes on in Melee. We're gonna have a bunch of top players, biggest fans, just cheer on and root for why they think X player is gonna win. Um, we're gonna get top players who are salty about losing in the tournament to other top players. In Something the of this game did happen. M2K did some out of game he mind game. He definitely out of game mind game the hell out of me. Tree transformation came up on Pokemon Stadium, and we're both just chilling there. It was like clear that neither of us was gonna approach, and I was like, okay. My water is kind of in front of the screen right now, so let me move it slightly over here. So I did that, and then M2K laughs, and then he moves my water back over here. <laughs> While I was laughing about him moving my water back, he tippered me through the tree. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> For the past month, I've been having to do research on tournaments and win-loss records, look at player habits, watch film, and just to get a good idea of what top players like, what they dislike, what their strengths and weaknesses are, what stages they like, what characters they dislike. So just a bunch of information to just make it as insightful as possible. Like, guys, 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 now. who are you and what do you do here at Big House Live? Who does this guy think he is? <laughs> <laughs> what, are you guys, uh, what are you guys doing specifically for Big House this time? Uh, the big initiative was the compendium, which uh, did really great, raised over $36,000 for the tournament. We also uh, had this art shop from all the Smash community artists, yeah. so people like Moxie2D, Meowth, Cosmonaut, all of them were in there. Overall, the compendium ended up uh, raising $12,000 in pod bonuses, including a $5,000 regional crew battle, 
uh, which ended up resulting in the best day one any national has ever had. I think oh, was, yeah. yeah, by far. Uh, But beyond that, we provide our normal services, so all of registration, uh, bracketing. Right now, the goal is to just provide Smash this backbone to operate on. I'd like to think that we really helped the experience. So these are the very special warm-up TVs that we have for players about to play on stage, but sometimes people just come back here and play friendlies, right? Correct, right? correct. Who are you and what have you done for Big House 5 this year? My name is Dr. Z, Nelly and Omi's own Dr. Z, and I've done absolutely nothing for Big House 5 so far. All right. We've been doing uh, eSports events since about 2007 talking to like a lot of other people that ran events, you know, one of the things that they needed was equipment for their event. You know, I'm happy to say we helped out the uh, top five biggest Smash events in the, the world. Yeah. Anywhere we're going, we have our warehouse where we, we basically get our, you know, our invoices, we get everything set up, all our equipment, we get our numbers, and we load it all up and we bring it out here, and then usually overnight we'll hook it all up, get it all running smoothly. I'm all radioed in, I walk around the floor in case there's any resets, you know, I got the mem cards for the game cubes, all that stuff. Even the depressed Mango, when I asked him what he thought about this big house, yeah, said, thought it was a great event. Muji King, great event. That's what I like to hear. Hungry Box, the best grassroots tournament, period. Mm -hmm. And Armada urged all of the viewers to, if they were going to go to one tournament next year, to make it the big house.